wondered why a drunk man isn't able to walk straight and walks in such an imbalanced, clumsy manner? It is because of the effect the alcohol has on his cerebellum. Hello guys and welcome to Thought Well by Unacademy and welcome to our part 2 of Rapid Revision on the Nervous System. So let's get started. So in today's class, we are going to be studying about the nervous system, the various parts of the brain and the main divisions of the nervous system. So let's start with the nervous system and its main two divisions. So the nervous system is divided into the central nervous system that comprises of your brain and the spinal cord and your peripheral nervous system consists of all the nerves. Okay, so here like you all can see, your brain is in yellow and your spinal cord is in yellow. So that would make your central nervous system and your nerves that are in pink would make your peripheral nervous system. All right. So these are the two main divisions of the nervous system. So your main nervous system is divided into the central nervous system that comprises of your brain and your spinal cord and the peripheral nervous system that comprises of the nerves. All right. So the peripheral nervous system is further divided into your somatic nervous system and your autonomic nervous system. So your somatic nervous system conveys messages from your central nervous system to your skeletal and voluntary muscles. Okay, so they are responsible for any action that happens voluntarily. Like you can see Ronaldo kicking a football here or me doing this. So your somatic nervous system is responsible for all your voluntary actions while your autonomic nervous system that comprises of, um, I'm sorry, just while your autonomic nervous system that comprises of a chain of ganglia and nerves which control involuntary actions like your breathing, like your digestion, etc. Right? So that is your autonomic nervous system. So the actions that are not voluntary are performed by your autonomic nervous system while the actions that are performed voluntarily are performed by your somatic nervous system. Easy, right? So again, your nervous system is divided into the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system comprises of your brain and spinal cord and your peripheral nervous system consists of all the nerves that are connected to your brain and spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system is further divided into the somatic nervous system that is responsible for all voluntary actions and the autonomic nervous system that is responsible for all your involuntary actions like breathing, digestion, etc. Okay, so moving forward, we are going to be talking about the most important organ in our body, which is the brain. All right. Just fun fact, but you all can get this in your examination. The brain comprises of 80% of water. Comprises of 80% of water and it consumes 25% of the oxygen that our body actually intakes. All right. So the brain being the most important organ of the human body takes 25%, that is one fourth of the entire oxygen that our entire body intakes. All right, so remember that. And if you have to define the brain in a very simple way, a brain, the brain is a very delicate organ that is well protected inside the cranium of the skull. All right, you can always think of the brain as that of a walnut, like the walnut's outer covering can be related to the skull and the inner part can be related to that of the brain. But speaking of the coverings of the brain, the brain has three main coverings. That is the dura matter, the arachnoid, that is thin and delicate and the pia matter. Okay, if you want to think of, if you want to remember these in a shorter form, you can always remember D, A, P, DAP. If you have to remember the three coverings of the brain in a more simpler manner, you can think of DAP, D, A, P, where D would stand for the dura matter, okay? Dura means tough. Dura means tough. And matter would mean mother. All right, so tough mother can be related to the dura matter. That is the outermost covering of the brain. And you have the arachnoid. Now, arachnoid basically means spider and why is it that they've named the middle layer of the covering of the brain as spider because this layer is very similar to that of a spider's web that is a little soft and cushiony that is thin and delicate okay hence the name arachnoid which means spider because it has a web-like protection and the last 
is the pia mater it is the innermost layer of the third uh, of the coverings of the brain that is very rich in blood supply and it is very delicate these are the three main membranous coverings of the brain that is the dura mater the arachnoid and the pia mater all right so let's move forward parts of the brain now the brain has three main parts which is the cerebrum the cerebellum and the medulla oblongata all right so this part on the outside that y'all see would be the cerebrum all right and this part over here that is below the cerebrum is a cerebellum all right and this part is your medulla oblongata all right so again the cerebrum is on the outside and below the cerebrum you have the cerebellum and below the cerebellum is the medulla oblongata all right so moving forward so the cerebrum is the largest portion of the brain that is divided into two main cerebral hemispheres which is the right and the left so remember this the cerebrum is divided into two cerebral hemispheres which is the left and the right hemisphere and the cerebrum is also the largest portion of the brain all right few points to remember about the cerebrum it has gray matter on its outside and white matter on the inside so gray matter outside and white matter inside all right and these folds over here on the outside of the cerebrum which is of the gray matter are called convolutions i know in the textbook convoluted is given which sounds like a very complicated word but convolutions that is convoluted means nothing but complex or complicated and i'll tell you all another interesting fact over here so more the number of convolutions on the gray matter of the brain it is believed that more the space for the nerve cells and higher the intelligence of the person so that is one fun fact that you all can take from here now let's move forward to the cerebellum now coming to the cerebellum the cerebellum is the much smaller part of the brain and it is located right at the base of the cerebrum okay but it doesn't have convolutions like the cerebrum does it just has these folds that are called furrows all right so that is your cerebellum for your so the main function of the cerebellum is to maintain balance of the muscular activities and that is why when a person is under the effect of alcohol the alcohol affects his cerebellum his or her cerebellum and the person is unable to walk steadily because the main function of the cerebellum is to balance and coordinate muscular activities and once the alcohol does affect the cerebellum that person becomes incapable that person's cerebellum in fact becomes incapable of carrying out the main function of balancing or coordinating muscular activities all right so let's move forward now coming to the medulla oblongata this would be your medulla oblongata all right where is it it is the lowest portion of the brain here so you have your cerebrum here you have your cerebellum here and here is where you find the medulla oblongata okay it is located at the base of the skull it is triangular in shape and it is continued behind see if you can notice here it is continued behind as a spinal cord all right so that is the medulla oblongata for you all so the main function of the medulla oblongata is to control the other functions of the internal organs like peristaltic movement such a big word peristaltic now what exactly is it that you mean by peristaltic peristaltic i would suggest you all remember this term cuz using it in your examination would definitely fetch all marks so peristaltic means nothing but like a wave of muscular movement example digestion it's 
it's basically a way of muscular movement that aids a particular action like for example while the process of digestion is taking place you can hear these churning sounds right those muscles are involuntarily moving so that is what is peristaltic movement all right so again the medulla oblongata is responsible for the control of activities of the internal organs like peristaltic movement movement of breathing and the beating of the heart etc and the injury of the medulla oblongata would definitely result in death all right so be aware moving forward now coming to the primary regions of the brain the primary regions of the brain are divided into three main parts which is the forebrain the midbrain and the hindbrain now the forebrain consists of the cerebrum like we saw previously and the diencephalon the diencephalon consists of the thalamus and the hypothalamus We will study about the functions in detail later. So for now, you all can remember that the forebrain consists of the cerebrum and the diencephalon, and the diencephalon consists of the thalamus and hypothalamus. All right, and coming to the midbrain, the midbrain is a small tubular structure. that is responsible for the reflexes in your eyes and ears all right and your hind brain would include the cerebellum pons which we will look at in the next part of the revision and your medulla oblongata so we have seen the cerebellum and we have seen the medulla oblongata so remember the hind brain consists of the cerebellum pons and medulla oblongata all right so remember the primary regions of the brain again consists of your forebrain your midbrain and your hind brain your forebrain consists of the cerebrum and the diencephalon which consists of the thalamus and the hypothalamus while your midbrain is this small tubular structure that is responsible for the reflexes of your eyes and ears and your hind brain consists of your cerebellum the pons and the medulla oblongata with that we come to the end of part 2 of our rapid revision on the nervous system stay tuned for the third part and let's crack it